excited today and I am happy to have my special guest today, Janelle Watkins. Hello. <laughs> she is the founder and owner of Women Authentic and she's also a natural hair brand influencer. I like to call her um, my big hair sister. <laughs> <laughs> so I am excited about hearing her story today. So I'm, I'm just going to get started here and let her share. I have been tempted to ask her some questions ahead of time, but I said, no, I'm going to wait till the interview. <laughs> and you all please like and share um, this interview to your pages. And also let us know at Hi Latanya, since you're watching, can you let us know if you you can hear us well. That's my creative director, LaTanya okay. Jackson. Hi, LaTanya. So shout out to LaTanya and my BFF, Patricia Anderson. Yay! So, <laughs> I'm so happy to have y'all. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, I've shared it to my, my personal page as well. So now, <laughs> hello, hair twins. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> and this is just day one for me. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So, we're going to get right into it now. So, my first question to Janelle today, what is your story behind discovering your purpose? Um, the story behind discovering my purpose, uh, when I was in college, God began to really deal with me while I was in college. Really? Mm-hmm. And, okay. and I think I was 19 and mm -hmm. I started really feeling like I needed to just go home and become a part of a church. Mm -hmm. And long story short, I ended up working for a ministry. I was reluctant about working for a ministry because, you know, I was so focused on I got to finish my degree. Mm -hmm. I want to be a career woman. I want to be independent, all of this. And so I ended up uh, working for a ministry. And from there, God just really began to show me what my purpose and, you know, what I was called to do. Okay. So um, along with that, opportunities came for me to work in women's ministries and volunteering and um, after that, I also started working with women's groups oh. and, and group homes. Mm -hmm. So my passion is really, really social work <laughs> really? with women. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, after so many years, I ended up uh, founding uh, Women Authentic, which is uh, the organization that I have now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where Women Authentic mm -hmm. came. Okay. Wow. Social work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So... Um, so, so that kind of came full circle for you. It did. It yeah. Did. Um, just having a passion to just encourage women to help them find what they're called to do mm -hmm. and um, just encouraging them. And uh, with Women Authentic, it, it creates a, a safe space and environment mm -hmm. for us to be able to have to create sisterhood, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times when you're in big environments, you can just pass people and not really be able to create those right. those in, those relationships that you really want with, with you know, with your sisters. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about real life issues. That's good. Um, a lot of times people are asking me, can you just put it live? Can you make, you know, put it live? But I think oftentimes we need to be in environments where everybody is not so, you know, it's not so wide open to your mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So um, it just creates that sisterhood and allows you to strengthen other people. You know, transparency mm -hmm. causes healing. Yes. And yes. when I'm transparent about what's going on with me, you never know because somebody else can be in the room and they can get strengthened behind what, what they're being, what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. So I, I've never had a session where a woman was not going through something and she shared her story and it helped somebody else. Mm, right. So I've seen women um, just with our meetings step out and just become bold. It's helped me to become bold in what I'm called to do. So um, I was saying earlier, a lot of times people think that just because I'm having these sessions, it's for them. It's for me too. Mm -hmm. I get, so, yeah. um, you I know, get it. even with, you know, with your purpose and your calling, it's not for us. It's for other, it's for uh, others as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I totally get that. And, um, and it's good that you have that type of, uh, that you create that intimacy for women to share mm -hmm. because women go through a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking with someone very close to me recently and we were saying that a lot of women that go through things, they go through them silently yeah. and no one even knows yes. that they're going through mm -hmm. it. So it that yeah, so that's really mm -hmm. good to hear. 
Mm -hmm. So what have been the life lessons you've learned along the way of your journey? Um, one of the life lessons has been balance mm. and um, just creating healthy boundaries, establishing mm -hmm. he healthy boundaries. Um, while I love to give and love to do things, I also learned along the way of how to say no. Yeah. And how to be able to still have healthy relationships. But but once you know your threshold and what you can and cannot do, it's OK to say no. Mm -hmm. And it's OK to say, look, I need some time for me to regroup, to, you know, to get refreshed and get replenished so I can go back out and do what I'm supposed to do. Right. So I learned along the way. Um, yes, you can have gifts and talents, but there are t moments where you have to have a cutoff so that you can continue to flow in those gifts mm -hmm. and talents. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I've learned along the way is just my own voice. You know, a lot of times we can listen to people. I'm listening to this person. I'm listening to that person. But what's your voice? What's your story? Right. So I've had to, uh, at times, kind of just step back from a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. and just find out what is God doing through me. Another mm -hmm. way I've been able to do that is through writing. You know, I love mm -hmm. to blog and um, I was doing a lot of blogs la last year, but I've kind of rerouted that to start writing the content for Women Authentic. So I'm doing what I call Bible blogs for us right now. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I like what you said about um, basically about doing you, finding mm -hmm. what it is that you're called to do because uh, I ran into that too along mm -hmm. my journey and um you know you get out there and you're all gung-ho about doing it but then i found myself also looking at other people uh -huh. and seeing what they were doing mm -hmm. and god had to put me in check and he said wait a minute yeah i've called you for something specific you have to hear from me yes. and allow me to use you for what you're called to do that's I, right i created you, I put in you something specific. Mm -hmm. So stick with that mm -hmm. and don't look at others. That makes me think about a time when I was at work and you know, you can have project after project after project, it never ends. And mm -hmm. I remember one time God was telling me, don't forget what I told you to do. Mm. Don't forget what I called you to do. Right. So um, <laughs> you just have to be bold enough to say, okay, look, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right, right. now. Like it, love it or leave it. Right. But you gotta be bold. Right. Mm -hmm. You do have to be bold because sometimes, um, you have to be do it regardless of whether people get it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that does take boldness because mm -hmm. sometimes you can feel like you're alone out there. It's like, is anybody exactly. really, really receiving or getting this? But you mm -hmm. have to keep on because you, you know God told you to do it. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's mm -hmm. good. That's good. So what influenced you to go natural? Um, let's see, about 2006, uh, an old friend of mine, she just came in my office and said, hey, I'm going natural. And do you want to go natural with me? So I kind of dealt with the fear and I said, okay, I can do it. You know, and then I had to start thinking about all the stuff that my mom had taught me along the way of when my hair was natural mm -hmm. and she never wanted me to get a relax or a perm. And so I had to go mm -hmm. back to all of that. And, um, I stepped out because of an influence of an, of an old friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and I transitioned back then. I didn't even, I didn't know anything about a big child. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't even think my husband would have been hearing it anyway. So I just, <laughs> I just decided. So okay, let me just gradually go into this thing. And so I, um, I transitioned, and during that time, I just started pressing my hair. Okay. So that's what okay. made me go natural. But after discovering um, just being natural and the the historical side of our ancestors not ever being able to wear their hair out. Mm -hmm. And I was having to, you know, have it wrapped up and covered and just being told that your hair is not beautiful and all of that. I said, you know, there is much more than just a trend. It's much more than just yes. saying it's a style. Yes. We are we're we are coming out saying that, you know, this is liberty and this is freedom because we didn't have this. Our ancestors didn't have that. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I felt I found that with my experience with going natural is that I finally saw me. Mm hmm. Um. It, yeah, and like you said, it was liberating because the um, I had had my care, hair chemically relaxed for years, mm -hmm. and then I felt like I, it got to a place where I was getting frustrated with not being able to do certain things I was able to do when mm -hmm. it, it was just natural. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it when I finally re went natural, that's when I think I really stepped out in my style mm -hmm. and everything. So mm -hmm. it yes. does, it brings out a whole different dimension of you that you not ever yeah. that you didn't know. Yeah. Um, for me, I had to get over. Oh, this strand is not you know is not perfect, and then I had to also mm -hmm. deal with the fact that I have big hair. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you take yeah. a look at, you know, the YouTubes and all the Instagram pictures and my hair. I want my hair to look like this. And, mm-hmm. and then I was like, you know what? Let me just love my texture. Yeah. And do me. And if it's mm-hmm. going to be big, it's just going to be big, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I found myself like that, too, because I was comparing my hair like I have the 4C hair. But then mm-hmm. I was looking at the girl with the 3A hair or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, right. I want my hair to look like hers. So mm-hmm. I was like, it's not going to happen. If you follow this stuff and use this product mm-hmm. and do that. Yeah. It, no, it's, your hair is going to come out the way it's supposed to come out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you have to embrace it. <laughs> use what God gave you. Right. So, okay, so you basically answered my question about what the, was the journey like for you mm-hmm. with going natural. So what inspired you to share your natural hair journey on social media and become a natural hair influencer? So um, I never set out to do it. Someone asked me and mm-hmm. I had a couple of people ask me, oh, you need to do videos. You need to just, you know, get out there. And I was like, I really don't want to be in the camera. You know, I was trying to like <laughs> not do that. And so I did a couple of a couple of videos and then a lo- I just started really enjoying um, the community. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a community of support yeah. in the natural hair community. Yeah. And um, I just loved it. So with that, I just started trying different products mm-hmm. and uh, just, you know, stepped out and started just just communicating with different people that did different things in the community. Yeah. So that's how I end up, you know, uh, I guess being an influencer, so to speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And you've done, cause I look at your hair and I'm like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's just, it's just gorgeous. And and it's like, every time I see it, it's just, it's just perfect. And I feel the same way about your hair. I'm like, oh, if I could just pick it just like that, I can get it like (laughs) that. Yeah. So what are your favorite natural hair products for natural hair brands? Um, Curls, Blueberry Bliss. That's mm-hmm. the one that I use the most often. And mm-hmm. then TGIN, thank God, is natural. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also Camille Rose Naturals. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So those are like the three that I go in and out from. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are good brands. Did you ever question or doubt yourself along your journey of purpose? Yes. And I'm mm-hmm. still just evolving into what God is telling me and calling me to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, yeah, there are days and there have been days when I'm like, Lord, it's taking too long. Did you really tell me that this is what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. And because I'm a planner and I love logistics, yep. I'm thinking things are going to turn out the way that I want it to turn right. out. And right. I'm supposed to go this route. And, you know, uh, it has not been that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um uh, I do have to just appreciate the path that I'm on right now because um, I think one of the things is I value the relationships more than anything. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I've doubted myself along the way. um, And during those moments, I just have to just get back with God, you Mm -hmm. know, go back to the last thing he told me to do. Right. And uh, remind myself of what he said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what were those moments like for you? What? Like, where did it take you emotionally and how did you pull yourself back? Um, it Emotionally, it's, it's caused me to compare. Mm-hmm. Um, it's caused me to regret, you know, because mm-hmm. even even when God tells you to do some things and then you're doing it and then you're like, OK, then what? Now, what am I supposed to do? Because then it turned out the way that you thought it would have right. turned out. So um, emotionally, it can cause uh, depression if you don't watch it, you yeah. know. So just mentally, you have to just kind of grab yourself and say, look, you know, I know what I'm called to do. Mm -hmm. You know, God is still working some things out. Mm -hmm. And then also I've um, this year, God just told me to start create a gratitude um, Mm -hmm. book. So every night I try as much as I can to write down everything that I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. So that helps me to kind of reflect and just have some quiet time to just regroup. Mm-hmm. Okay. So emotionally, yeah, I have to just, you know, you just have to snatch yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do get that. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to take a moment here okay. and see who has joined us again. So this is Priscilla. Hey, Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla. And someone else. Uh, oh, Christine Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Christine. And Latanya. Thank you, ladies, for watching. So we're going to, uh, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you all. Thank you for tuning in. So we're going to continue. Hi, beautiful. Mi- okay, Latanya. Scoot over a bit. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, we scoot over a bit. Okay. okay. More into the camera. Okay. Okay. 
Y'all don't want to see me, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on a little. Okay, thank you, ladies. Yeah, those are uh, my two buddies up in Maryland. Latanya is the creative director, and Priscilla was my first interviewer. Aww. Interviewee, rather. Yay. Thank you for the heart. Yes, thank you. So now, um, Janelle, you have mm -hmm. a very important event coming up mm -hmm. on April 7th. So I definitely want to hear about that. It's called Beautifully Sound. Yes. Um, it is a women's mental health and wellness panel. Mm. Um, last, I think it was in 2016 when I did my women's hair, uh, natural hair brunch, mm -hmm. I told my mom, I said, I think I really want to do something about mental health. And only because of my own testimony of how God just helped me overcome anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. And I kept it as a secret for a long time. Um, wow. At the time, I was a caretaker for my husband. My husband was in and out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. We were newlyweds. And, um, you know, just people don't really want to hear about what's going on with you to that degree. A yeah. lot of times, how you doing, girl? Fine. Mm -hmm. And anything else is like, hey, I really don't want to just mm -hmm. know all of what's happening. And so... Um, I had to really fight in order to be able to come out of that. It was a darkness. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think in 2013, I said, I really want to start sharing my story. Mm -hmm. So I asked a girlfriend, Christine, I don't know if she's still on here, but I asked <laughs> her to, to just come alongside with me because we shared our own personal stories about just overcoming anxiety. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I prayed and I said, I'm going to step out and do it. And so God just mm -hmm. began to connect the dots. Okay. So Beautifully Sound is about us take just reclaiming our mental health mm -hmm. and for us to be able to have a healthy discussion about mental health is not we don't have to be afraid of it mm -hmm. um yes mm -hmm. i'm a strong believer i know that god delivers us but i also think that we need to talk about the coping mechanisms mm -hmm. so that we can know mm -hmm. not to how to avoid to be able to you know to protect our mental health mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, we'll also talk about holistic living. So we have a lady that's on the panel. She does blood analysis. And so she's going to really uh -huh. go in depth and talk about, you know, just being able to take care of your body and how the body impacts your, your mental health as well. Mm -hmm. You know, what we eat, how we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we'll be talking about self-care. Okay. It's not a trend. That's something that we have to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in order necessary. to be right. In order to be able to maintain. So, um, you know, just as if something was wrong with our eyes or or if we break our arm, we got to go to the doctor. So if we feel like something is going on mentally. It's OK to talk about mm -hmm. it. And it's OK to talk to someone, mm -hmm. a professional about that so that we can be able to get that help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Because, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people like like I said earlier, a lot of people go through it and they go through it silently. Mm -hmm. I, I was that same way, too, because mm -hmm. I struggled with it and went through it, too. And I went through it silently. Mm -hmm. uh, for years, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and so um, you have to be very careful because um, mental health is not something that's really that we're afraid to address. Mm -hmm. We think that um, it's not necessarily that there's something wrong, right? You know, and I think that's where we that's where we kind of mm -hmm. get stuck, mm -hmm. thinking that there's something wrong with me and um, for me, it was like I didn't want to share it or talk about it. But I said, because if I share it with someone or tell someone, then that's just going to make things worse because mm -hmm. I felt like they're going to make more of a big mm -hmm. deal. I'm already freaking out as it is. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. don't want to. And when I was going through it, it, you know, it was during a time where I was like, well, I can't tell my mom. This is when my mom was still living. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't tell her mm -hmm. because she's just going to overreact. So I just kept it to myself and I mm -hmm. suffered silently. Mm -hmm. But eventually... Um, Breakthrough came the more I got into the word. See? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The more I got mm -hmm. into the word, then that's when I started having breakthrough mm -hmm. in it. But um, it's something that um, we still have to be, because it happens. Right. And it happens for various reasons. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, we need to know the triggers. You need to know mm -hmm. what you should and should not engage in so that you can, mm -hmm. you know, protect your mental health. Yeah. And that's what I had to learn because after God delivered me from everything I was going through, I was like, okay, now show me what do I need to avoid? Show me what do I need to do so that I will not get back into this pit again? Mm -hmm. Because I remember nights of just being up worried all night, couldn't sleep, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, having to say scriptures out loud and having to just, just meditate on the word and meditate on the word in order to be able to even be able to go to sleep at night. Yeah. 
So I just feel like, um, like you're saying, we need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And we need, we need to know that other women, just people, period, you know that you're not alone in your walk. Right. Um, so that's what this is going to be about for okay. us. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, what was that? I was going to ask you. That's right, Priscilla. Protect your mental health. That's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Much needed. Much needed. So um, was it um, was it something that you mentioned how it started for you? Mm -hmm. Had it started any time prior to that? or I think just over the years of always worrying about things mm -hmm. and... Um, after I got married, my husband got sick. And one of the biggest things was I, I was afraid that somebody was going to come in and break into our apartment. Mm. So it started, you know, just a small thought here and there, just mm. worrying about this, worrying about how am I going to pay the bills? And, you know, if he's gone, what's going to happen to him? Is he going to die? Just like, mm -hmm. so all of these questions are starting to bombard my mind. Okay. And I'm not taking authority over it because we have yeah. authority as believers. Right. So I'm, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do with that. And it just evolved into something that I felt like I couldn't control anymore. Mm -hmm. And so um, God began to show me what I need to, needed to do in order to break out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And um, I'm starting to learn more. It's, it's interesting that this is coming up now mm -hmm. because, I, you know, I know of people that, have experienced or or experiencing it now and even lately I've been experiencing some emotional moments mm -hmm. and I've been looking at it and wondering okay what is this and I, like you said there like I was saying there's four various reasons mm -hmm. so um, I'm at that stage where I'm at you know premenopause and okay. all that kind of stuff so yeah. I, I, I recognize that now because I, mm -hmm. I, I thought about it and I was like I wonder what this is and part of it I was seen as because I'm approaching the anniversary of my oh, parents mm -hmm, passing away mm -hmm. as well. So that can equally mm -hmm. as well be a trigger. Mm -hmm. So it's just. Um, I understand. But when my grandmother passed um, the anniversary, I would I would just have this heaviness on me. Yes. And I couldn't understand yes. where the heaviness was coming from. And then right. my mom would text me and she would say, hey, I had to take off today because, you know, yeah. this is the day. And it, mm -hmm. it, would, it would remind me, OK, mm -hmm. this is what's happening. Yeah. And um, those are those times when I've had to journal. I've had to get with mm -hmm. God. I've had to pray. Mm -hmm. And I deal with the emotions. Mm -hmm. I don't run from them. I kind of right. go through the emotions. But I, I know yeah. that because God is with me. He's going to keep me. He's going to hold me in the midst of that. Yes. Because a lot of times we try to run from those emotions. We don't even want to deal with. Right. Them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I've learned that too. I'm like, okay, it's, I, I can't run from this because if I run from it, it's just going to mm -hmm. get worse. Mm -hmm. And it's going to mm -hmm. become, as a matter of fact, there was, I had a moment last week where I, I was just in the grocery store picking up some groceries and there was a lady mm -hmm. that works in the store and, um, she she approached me to t oh mm -hmm. she was uh, admiring something I had on mm -hmm. so we just started talking and she just started opening up to me sharing how she had lost her parents mm -hmm. and she had lost both her parents within the same year and next thing I know she's crying oh, and so forth yeah. and breaking down so I'm comforting her yeah and then so I'm you know I was fine at the moment mm -hmm. I was like oh I'm mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so the <laughs> next thing I know by the time I got home and pulled in the garage, I just it hit. broke. Mm -hmm. It hit. Mm -hmm. And I was just I was just all over the place. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, my gosh. I get it. Because yeah. there are still moments when I can't really talk about my grandmother for a long period mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. And it would just, you know, like you said, it, all of a sudden it just comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just comes. And so now I can relate. I, it, at first, before, I couldn't really relate to what people saying. And mm -hmm. it's like people say, you don't know what it's like until it. Happens. Until it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember not even wanting to go into the next year because I felt like if we go into the next year, I'm going to leave my grandmother. Mm. And I and I couldn't. I felt wow. like who's going to understand what I'm feeling. I don't. I don't right. want to go into the uh, the new year because right. I don't want to leave her behind. Yeah. So just that whole right. mental that process, I had to. I had to allow myself to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And I called up a girlfriend and we talked about it. She said, "Oh, I know exactly what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know." So. Um, we have to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, talking is therapy for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And it's, it's like, um, and I was wondering, I was like, who can I talk to you? Because mm -hmm. you wonder who can you talk to about mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. You know, you really do. And um, sometimes it's like, 
I, I find that when I have that, those moments where it's building up, but I don't, mm -hmm. I still don't release, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. I've never been much of a crier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, but that particular day I did cry. Mm -hmm. So, it, and when I released it, I did feel better. Mm -hmm. I did feel better, mm -hmm. but I still, um, since that moment, I still have those moments yeah. where I, it builds up and because it's not quite, and I even saw it coming. Mm -hmm. Like uh, weeks before it happened, I was like, it's about to be a year, mm -hmm. and I saw it coming that this is what I was going to be going through. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just it's just really interesting how those, I guess what people call it's those soul ties. Or... Yeah, and I just you know the closeness of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It can it can just hit you because it's so close to you. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. I felt like the very foundation had just been pulled away from me when my grandmother passed, mm -hmm. and. I'm like, okay, well, you know, God is my rock. He is my foundation at the end of the day. So, yeah. you know, you just have to encourage yourself in right. the word. Um, right. And at the same time, you know, have a support system. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if people handle grief differently. Now, mm -hmm. I know that, uh, and, and people have said this to me, that when I lost both my parents last mm -hmm. year, it was like, um, they, one particular friend, she's like, I don't know how, how you, did mm -hmm. it. She said, I don't know how you got through it the way you did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's God. I can't explain it. Yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. explain it. All I know is that it's, it's God. Mm -hmm. And, um, but now I feel like God is saying, okay, now it's time to release it. It was mm -hmm. like, I didn't have time to, to really grieve. stop and grieve mm -hmm. and really, cause when it was happening, I really didn't have time to really sit in the moment because mm -hmm. there was so much going on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I really didn't have time to sit in the moment and really feel mm -hmm, and really mm -hmm. sit and really see what was happening. And now I've had time to look back and see what was really happening mm -hmm. and really sit in it. So now it's like, okay, mm -hmm. it's, I got to release it because yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that you're doing this. Um, yeah, and I'm excited. You know, I just want people to know that it's not going to be a, a deep kind of scary thing that we're, you know, talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to, you know, make it as um, to let people know it's just a safe space for us to be able to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what people, people definitely need that safe space. I think that's, and that's what causes people to hold back a lot is because mm -hmm. they don't feel safe. And it's good that they can have a safe place to come mm -hmm. to and share. So, Janelle, um, did you at any point see yourself doing this, being out in front? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know just before we started the interview, you were like, Rhonda. <laughs> Yeah, earlier I, we, yeah. We, we were talking and I was just saying, I, I've been trying to run from doing this kind of thing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think just being in the things of God for, you know, for so many years now, he's been telling me, okay, it's, it's going to be time, you know, mm -hmm. so you can't run, you can't run. Mm -hmm. um, I've even tried to make my husband just, I'm like, you need to go and just, you know, start ministering. I'll, I'll be behind you and I'll right. do this. And he's like, no, you, you need to take, just pause for a minute because, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. So just step mm -hmm. out. So um, oftentimes I don't know why people love the, the ones that love to be behind the scenes are the ones that are supposed to be on the forefront a lot of times. Yeah. So I'm getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly it. Cause that's, yeah, I get it. Right. So, <laughs> get it. so no, not in the beginning. I didn't see it, but um, I, I've, I've kind of just learned, you know, just flow with God mm -hmm. and, I've been nervous, you know, I had to deal with the jitters of just even doing this. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, I'm just, you know, just flowing with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you do it well. Cause you, you, well, thank you. you, you can't tell, <laughs> thank you, you can't tell at all. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, do you think that you have finally found your purpose or do mm -hmm. you think that there's still more? I think I'm it? just cracking the surface with it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's That's so good. much more that I see that has not taken place yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, this has been the year that I feel like I'm just, you know, just stepping out into it. Mm -hmm. So you're living, finally living your purpose finally. out loud. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Out loud. And yeah. just finally, uh, feeling like I'm becoming the woman that God has called me to be finally feeling like I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. Um, regardless of who's in the room, I'm mm -hmm. me, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to do me. Right. 
and it's okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite phrase that that people say is "I am enough." Yes. Yeah, and that really, that really, I really take that personally. It really means mm -hmm. a lot now mm -hmm. that I am enough. So um, yeah, because everybody, everybody is styled by God, mm -hmm. put together by God mm -hmm. in a certain way, in a certain fashion, mm -hmm. and it's meant for somebody. Mm -hmm. So um, sharing our stories and sharing our purposes is, is definitely for someone else. And yeah. when God tells us to that we need to step out and do it, it's, it's just we just got to do it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to wait for it to be perfect. Right. So how was that like for you? Did you think that you had to wait for everything to be perfect before you stepped out to do what you're doing? I tried to hold on to some fears on purpose because I was wow. just afraid. I was really? like, I said, Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And so God told me, I, you don't have all the time that you think you have. So mm. you're going to have to overcome this stuff now. Wow. So um, that's, what, that's what happened. So it was just being able to overcome fears mm -hmm. that just held me back. Nobody was holding me back. It was me. Mm -hmm. I was fighting me more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once I gave myself permission, that's when things begin to change. Right, right. And and I think that's that's big. That's huge mm -hmm. to say that because when you do step out in your purpose, it's um that is one of the things that breaks you in. You learn that everything's not going to be perfect and it's mm -hmm. not going to go the way you expect it, but you have to do it anyway mm -hmm. in order for it because it's it's really God's purpose for you. Mm -hmm. So God is like when God's pushing you out there and you you try right. to resist, he's like, uh-uh, come on, let's go. And you have to just keep, and the more you do it, the more clarity you get. Yes. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember in 2016 when, when God was just pressing on me, you need to do this natural hair brunch. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, everybody's mm -hmm. doing a brunch. I don't want to do that, mm -hmm. you know. And so I said, well, what's, what's going to be the big deal? Mm -hmm. But I found in that just loving the fact of doing an event just in being involved in in the logistics of everything and everybody had a good time i had a good time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but he was pushing me to do that but i believe that that just opened up something within me yeah to just be able to just be more vocal use my voice mm -hmm. and uh to just encourage other women to step out and do stuff mm -hmm. it does and then, yeah and i've learned that too mm -hmm. is like the more i stepped out and do that it's like it's something for me as well. Mm -hmm. I get something from it. Like I said, doing these interviews, people are pouring into me as well mm -hmm. when I'm interviewing them. So, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I definitely get that. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you see going forward for Women Authentic? And uh, uh, what I see going forward is um, I do want to open it up more for women. Mm -hmm. uh, so that because in the in the past I've always just kept it very closed. But uh, I'm excited about writing the content this year. I've been writing the the Bible blogs that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's always been on my heart to create a Bible, um, just Bible books and just Bible studies for women. Mm -hmm. So, but I've learned the audience. You know, everything is not for everybody. So I know my audience and mm -hmm. I know the women that I'm dealing with. And mm -hmm. I know that a lot of us can't, we don't have three or four weeks to go through a whole entire book. Mm -hmm. So I've learned um, just from writing blogs on how to be able to condense everything so that they can capture it in bite size, mm -hmm. uh, create um, actionable steps at the end. So that when we do come together, we can talk about, okay, what did God show you when you did, you know, X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z okay. at the end of each Bible blog. Oh, that's so good. I'm excited about that. Just uh, being able to write the content and open it up more. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. How were you able to identify your audience? What were the steps or what did you do to I honestly, it was just the girlfriends that I had around me, mm -hmm. the people that I've always, uh, that have just always come to me and asked me for advice about just how to navigate through things in life. Mm -hmm. And those that know me personally know that I'm always at Starbucks having a coffee, having a chat with whoever. Girl, can we, can we sit down and talk about this? Cause I'm going through this. I'm like, okay, let's meet at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So I just started feeling like if I could just gather everybody that I talk to in the room, and we could talk about these issues and talk about these subjects and, and, and just go through it in the word of God. Mm -hmm. I believe everyone will be strengthened by everybody's story. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So that's how I was able to find my audience. Okay. <laughs> just real life situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. That's good. Yeah. So, um, so now, um, marriage, what did that do for you? How, how did that affect you as a person? 
as a person, um, it, it, my husband is a talker mm -hmm. and I was not a talker until after I got married. So, <laughs> um, his strength became my strength. Mm -hmm. So I've learned just by watching him and how he deals with people and he doesn't know a stranger. Mm -hmm. I, now I don't know a stranger. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've yeah. learned how to talk more Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and just use my voice more. So mm -hmm. he has been a major support in, uh, in our ministry and our organization and, mm -hmm just being able to see the gray sides of life because before I got married I was very black and white about everything it has mm -hmm. to be this way mm -hmm. or I'm not doing it at all mm -hmm. and Van is very uh very compassionate very open-hearted yeah. open-hearted yeah. and has an open mind about a lot of stuff mm -hmm. so I've just learned from him just it's okay mm -hmm. you can relax and see the gray side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's good. Yeah. And he is and shout out to Van because Van <laughs> is my t-shirt guy he is that's who I go to to get my Style by God t-shirts printed up. So thank you, Van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so, okay, Women Authentic mm -hmm. and Beautifully Sound. Do you see more of that happening in the future? I do. We've been talking a lot and it's kind of taking its own movement of its own. Mm. So we do have um, some things that we'll be talking about with teen girls in the future mm, that we okay. want to um, kind of just you know, the whole identity of a, of a girl and uh, as she evolves and become a woman, mm -hmm. becomes a woman. So we will be talking about that. So, yes, we will have some things coming okay, in the future good. for uh, Beautifully Sound. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that because it is much needed. Mm -hmm. It's really much needed and the healing is necessary. So, um, so with that being said, I had a question mm -hmm. about it. Uh, how did, how did you all, the, the women that you have speaking mm -hmm. and you and Christine, how did mm -hmm. you all come together? What was, how did that all come about? Um, I told Christine that I needed a uh, psychologist to be on the panel mm -hmm. and I, I wanted women of God to be on the panel mm -hmm. because I think it's important that we know the spiritual side, but then we also deal with the natural side of everything, mm -hmm. especially in the Christian community. We yeah. need to, you know, have that whole conversation. Yeah. So, um, just prayer and through people that she knew and that I know, you know, people started just just connecting the dots and coming in. Mm -hmm. One of the ladies um this this speaking, um, her husband was a victim of of suicide. Mm -hmm. And one morning, I felt I felt really impressed in my spirit that we needed someone to speak. And she called me, Christine called me the next morning and said, "Oh, I have somebody that can come and speak." I said, "Okay, great. Let's get on board." Mm -hmm. So God has really been connecting everything for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So, do you see how along your journey or purpose, how it, the divine connections have led you to? your purpose like mm -hmm. I, the phrase that the term I like to use purpose connects connects the dots mm -hmm. so along my my journey stepping out into something I was really passionate about mm -hmm. and then along that path I was connecting with individuals that crossed my path mm -hmm. and it took my purpose to another level mm -hmm. did you see that that oh I definitely see oh absolutely mm -hmm. um and that's one of the things about just accepting the will of God for your life yes those relationships are so key and so valuable more mm -hmm. than anything uh, because what you do in your life not only impacts you but it impacts others mm -hmm. and it influences others mm -hmm. so um, just the women and the mentors that I've had along the way have been so valuable mm -hmm. to help me to become the woman that I am mm -hmm. um, so that's been my backing and my support. And so when I meet other people and, uh, you know, just talk to other people, that that strength that I have and that support has helped me to be a more of a strength for others as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. So let me see what... I would uh, love to share you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Her book, Soul Check. Great job on the t-shirts. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. <laughs> And Ty said, yes, deal with the emotions. Thank you, ladies. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So so where can people uh, find you? And where can they learn uh, more about the event that's coming up April 7th? Okay. The event, um, if you go to bit.ly forward slash beautifully sound, you can uh, see the flyer there. Also, if you can follow me on Instagram at the Janelle uh, Watkins um, on Instagram, 
there and women authentic is bit.ly forward slash women authentic okay mm -hmm. good so yay awesome well thank you janelle thank for you. sharing today this has been really good i'm i'm really excited about attending the uh beautifully sound event next week and um I'll I'll share my feedback about that whole event because that that's something that is much needed and I'm I'm grateful that you're doing this because I I've been wanting an outlet mm -hmm. for that for a long time mm -hmm. because I still know I've been wanting a safe place yeah to share mm -hmm. and you know and to be in a room amongst women that that we're all going through this together mm -hmm. exactly you know, mm -hmm. that that really. It really makes me feel good. So I'm really grateful for that. So I want to thank you ladies for tuning in. And also I want to mention that coming up next Saturday is another interview. And it will be at my new venue location called Art House Alive in Jonesboro, Georgia. Yay. That is going to be a special event because we're going to have a live studio audience attending and in a performance as well by the artist Twin Spirit. So I want you to join us next Saturday, April 7th, 7 p.m. I'll be uh, broadcasting live from Art House Live in Jonesboro, Georgia. Also on April the 8th, I'll be <laughs> also <laughs> uh, coming to you live. I'll be coming to you from an event called the um, Azalea Film Festival in Mobile, Alabama. There's something Aww. special going on there. So you have to tune in on Sunday, April the 8th, as I share what, I, what I'm there for. It's going to be very exciting. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Have a blessed evening. And jo oh, and happy Resurrection Day. <laughs> thank you, ladies. <laughs>